Hello and welcome back everyone to the Powder Toy. So, I don't know if it's last time, but one of these videos I showed you guys Unintrium, which is extremely unstable and is the basis for everything amazing in the Powder No, I'm joking. I, I just threw it together. It's super radioactive and it had some issues. It wasn't the most effective at doing what I wanted it to do. So I've, I've reworked it a bit and I'd like to show you guys what you can do with Unintrium fantastic element itself so first off i'm going to put it on the moon <laughs> it very quickly heats up and um well it heats up everything around it it it'll keep heating up it degrades rather quickly so it will disappear uh into neutrons but as you can see we've kind of turned the moon into the sun just by introducing a little bit of unentrium to it if you put an Entrium in space where it can't actually get its heat energy out into anything, it will turn into plasma fireworks. So you can actually kind of do a little bit of a fireworks show. Look at this. Uh, unless it hits the planet, in which case it'll... Oh, yikes. It'll let its heat energy out onto the planet. And, oh, that one pixel has started a, a wildfire, and these pixels are taking out the ocean. As I said, very violent. For example, if we take the space station here and just put three pixels of Unintrium in it, I believe that it'll take the entire thing out. Um, and it'll do it violently. It's not going to take its time. It actually accelerates. The hotter it is, the more heat it creates. It's brilliant that way. It's a runaway reaction, like nothing you've ever seen before. So while that gets toasty, I guess I'll talk about what I've actually tweaked. So I increased the threshold for it to become plasma, so now it takes a little bit longer for it to become plasma, which gives it more of a chance to get its heat onto an object, you know? I guess we'll fill the rest of these with an Emtrium, because why not? Uh, and I also made it act a little bit more like a liquid, because it, was, uh, it wasn't really acting very liquidy. I didn't like it. And, um... That, both of those changes combined have made it much more effective at doing what I wanted it to do, which was uh, act like a super radioactive sludge, like the elephant's foot at Chernobyl. It will melt through and sink through anything you put in its way. It's the ultimate bunker buster, as long as gravity is in the direction of the bunker. As you can see, it's currently just melting to the core of this planet. That is Unintrium, actually, in the center of the planet. It made it all the way to the center. You can't stop it. You can't stop it. It goes to the center. It melts it from the inside out. And, and look, the entire planet is collapsing inwards now. Look at the ground moving in. It's absolutely insane. There is no element like this in the powder toy, which I'm proud to say. I mean, sure, you have my goos, which I've introduced in a prior video, but uh, brilliant. Look at this. And it's much more exciting if we do it with a city uh, or buildings, because the <laughs> it, it's a fantastic weapon. Once again, unlike anything you've ever seen. So let's go ahead and get these big buildings. I think these all work well. And on top of this office building right here, let's just put a tiny amount. Tiny amount. Just a little pile. We can drop it from an airplane or something. And as you can see, it's fallen in, but it just doesn't stop. It melts through a floor. It melts through the next floor. It melts through the next floor. It's falling into the elevator shaft. And now these floors are starting to heat up because it's in the shaft. There's nothing you can do to avoid its fury. It will heat up. And it will heat up. And it will heat up. You have to be prepared for that reality, and as it heats up, it'll continue going down towards the ground until it buries itself all the way in the core of the planet. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Look at it go. It's taking out another floor. Now it's falling even further down the elevator. It's basically... Just to put this into perspective, this tiny, tiny amount of this element can go and catastrophically take out an entire sky rise going floor by floor. It's just brilliant. And if you add more, it's, it's not even close. A mediocre amount of this stuff can take out not just an entire skyscraper, but everything under it and around it as well. The only thing holding it back is the fact that it very quickly 
decays into neutrons. Um, and that's because it's radioactive. That's your only saving grace. Look, it's gotten into the basement. To put this into perspective on how much damage this is, if we go ahead and do our classic thermite, I'll even put more thermite. I'll be generous. It goes down, but look at where it stops. Right? It stopped there. We took out the top floors, it poured over the side, it did a bit of damage. But if we go ahead and get at our Unentrium and do the same amount, it goes floor to floor to floor to floor, and it keeps moving down one floor at a time. It leaks through the elevator shaft. It blows up random floors because it just wants to go down. It's heavy and it's hot and it's going to continue mining its way through. If you had just a stream of this placed onto a city like so, you could pretty much take out an entire city within seconds. <laughs> it, it's brutal. It's absolutely brutal what this stuff will do. And if you did an even thicker stream of it, well, I don't think I need to say that it would be absolutely catastrophic. <laughs> Try this with Thermite, you will not get the same reaction. You'll get some damage, but just the length of which this is able to just slowly break through break down and continue to plunge through the floors is just insanity. The temperatures it's able to hit are just next level. And not just that, but it works extremely, extremely well uh, in fighting spaceships. Fun fact, I did some uh, testing with our favorite map over here, the Devastator class battleship. And to give you an idea of how I did this in the past, I brought Let's just turn off decoration so we can see inside of the shape. Uh, the ship, there's some fun things you could do. You can use plasma and you can go like, pew, attack with plasma rays, right? Plasma is like the hottest thing on the powder toy. Plasma hitting things will heat it up and hopefully do some big damage, especially if we hit these major guns. We can actually take out and disable the guns using plasma. Fun fact, we can take out the engines as well using plasma. We could probably, if we continued striking one part of the ship, break a hole in it with plasma. That's fun, and we can simulate uh, attacks using this. So let's go ahead and use an entram <laughs> as our attack method. Are you prepared? Let's take out a main gun. No? Now you may say, oh, it looks like it did a little bit less damage. But wait, <laughs> as you can see, even though it did less damage immediately, the amount of leftover heat that's being let out by the Unentrium, which is still sticking around, is causing random parts of the ship to literally explode. And I don't even have to, like, hit it spot on. I can do some pretty questionable stuff here. It can also break through the armor on the bottom far more effectively. Oh, there it goes. See, it's a delayed reaction, but when it goes off, it is brutal. Absolutely brutal. And it does leave a trail of plasma as well, which looks cool. If we use a thicker attack, put it to the 3x3, three three, there, there isn't even a chance. <laughs> the ship does not stand a chance against a uh, three-wide ray of an Untrium. It's able to breach even the thick side armor. We can poke holes in the ship easily. We can take out its engines like they never even existed in the first place. The bridge? More like... Brin not. <laughs> ah, brilliant. And before you say what I think you're gonna say, we will do the same testing using plasma. Oh. It didn't breach. Oh, I actually drew inside of it, so... <laughs> it's able to breach the main guns, I will admit that, but the explosions are not nearly as exciting. Like, you saw that explosion. Let's go back to using our Ununtrium friend, because trust me, the explosion is much more magnificent. 
yeah. Tell me, tell me that wasn't far more far. Look at it, shot out a ray, like eight miles away. It's it's just amazing. And if we use an ultra thick boy, I mean, there is no surviving it. Interestingly, you don't even have to hit the damn thing. If we just get close, it'll spread out, and because it turns into plasma, you can take out basically the entire surface of the ship immediately. It's fantastic. Honestly, this is the greatest space weapon that I've ever developed. Well, except for one other thing. I mean, if we want to be completely honest about my weaponry that I've developed in my mod, um... Yeah, we, we, we took out the warp core. That's pretty exciting. Uh, nothing's going to beat red goo. <laughs> if we introduce red goo to this ship, I don't think there will be a ship within like 30 seconds. Let's see. Do, 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 do. <laughs> okay, the red goo is a little bit more effective at taking out the ship, but that's because the red goo is kind of just like the ultimate annihilator of worlds. There is no surviving red goo. There is no getting past Red Goo. <laughs> it is honestly just the screw you element. <laughs> Everything is engulfed by the Red Goo. But still, I'd just like to say that. I'm pretty hot. Going back to the Bunker City where we did tests beforehand, I'd like to say that the new version of my beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Unantrium is far more effective. Even if we give it, like, a mediocre size start, you may be saying that's way more than mediocre spike, but eh, that's pretty mediocre compared to some of the sizes of the bombs we use. This will go down. The issue is it's exiting. Okay, 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 okay. I'm going to make one slight modification so it doesn't fall out of the world. I'm going to set it to solid. There we go. Okay. This is a little bit... This will prevent it from being awful. Let's see how quickly we can breach this bunker. <laughs> and let's go to the heat display real quick, just so that we can see how hot this is. Right now it's at 1600 degrees, it's getting... so it falls to the bottom, and then it heats up. So 3000 degrees. Over here it's hitting 6000 degrees now. It's getting even higher and higher and higher as it spreads out. And look, there it is, a layer of Unan Trim at the very bottom. Now it is becoming neutrons rather quickly and being destroyed, but that doesn't matter. So much heat is being let in that by the time it's destroyed, we're already going to have breached the bunker. Keep in mind, a plutonium bomb takes a long time and it needs to be very large, and placing it on top of the building would be a non-starter. It would have to be further down in order to breach into this bunker. But Unum Trium is able to work its way through, and within a good few seconds, I think we're going to be completely through. I mean, we have made literal uh, nuclear stew over here. Look at it. 6,000, 7,000 degrees. It's beginning to eat through the insulation layer, as you can see here. The red dots are Unantrium because they're the ones that get hot enough. When it turns purple, it occasionally gets hot enough to convert to plasma, which gives it a little spot, which makes it so that it can eat through the insulation. It's kind of like, as I said before, this stuff is almost designed to reach bunkers. It's just so good at the job. And now there's just one more layer of insulation. It would only take one Unumtrium, which has done it, to break through. Now it just has to melt through the titanium, and it's done. The titanium's actually sending the heat pretty efficiently across, so it's not the easiest to melt, but the amount of heat that's stored above this 2000 plus degree and we also have Unum Trium just sitting here pumping more and more heat in. I do believe that the entire underground section is going to collapse. Maybe not. We'll see. I think I put enough in Trium. It may need a little bit more to do the full breach. But the fact that there was no explosion. First off, we didn't even use a bomb. We just placed down this element and it has burrowed all the way in. And if we go back to fancy display, I'm sure that we will see, yeah, this is all heating up like crazy. Let's just add a tiny bit more Unandrium, just a tiny bit to try to breach the rest of this. It should not take long. 
And because it's so heavy, there it goes. Like I said, this is the ultimate tool in your arsenal for breaching into a bunker. Honestly, if I was careful, I could probably do this with very, very minimal damage to the rest of the map. I mean, if you really think about it, we could slowly just put one pixel after another and cut a clean hole through the building. That's not quite as exciting, but it could certainly be done. And it's now in the floor, and it's melting it from the floor. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Eventually, this will make it through as well. It just is lagging behind. Brilliant. So anyways, I just wanted to show you guys my new use for Unum Trium, which is being a brilliant bunker buster. If you build Unum Trium into a bomb with plutonium and you ensure that it goes in the correct direction, um, you can have some fantastic effects. So let me show you what I mean by that. You want to spray the Unum Trium out. So we do Unum Trium first. Then we do Plutonium, and we need it to go immediately. So then we're going to put Neutrons. And actually, I think I may have done this a little bit too thick on the shell, but we'll see how it goes. And we get immediate pressure, and there we go. With the Plutonium mixed with the Unum Trium, it just legitimately did not stand a chance. The buildings are taken out by the classic plutonium, and then the Unum Trium digs deep, going as far down as it can, breaking through the pipes, moving towards the bunker. There's really nothing you can do about it. It is the ultimate weapon. I'm going to design some new bombs in the future that work with Unum Trium to see just how far I can push it, and I'm obviously going to develop more elements as well to help me in my goals, but look at that. We're at 5,000 degrees at the peaks of this, which is really damn high. And we've, honestly, the amount of explosive load on that bomb was quite low. A majority of it was really, if you looked at it, just neutrons. So if we increased the yield a little bit, uh, it could be absolutely brutal. And this is holding its temperature at 4,000. It's not cooling down because there's still an Trium within it, just giving more and more, and more heat. It's a good weapon. It's a good element. And um, I'm going to keep working on it, but I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out. So thank you all for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And I'll see you all next time. Peace. Wow, oh, thanks for watching. We're, we're getting close to Texas move. Uh, four days. I mean, it's just past midnight, so... A little bit gracious but yeah that means I have to make a lot more videos in advance uh, that's why <laughs> it's quite late but thank you for watching leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed I'll see you all next time adding new exciting elements and just doing crazy things the upload schedule and everything's gonna be way more consistent soon thanks